Time Warner Cable Sportsnet presents NCAA Division I College Hockey as the RIT Tigers take on the Canisius College Golden Griffins in the Buffalo State Ice Rink on the campus of Buffalo State College in downtown Buffalo. Gorgeous afternoon here in Western New York. The Pond Hockey Tournament just down to the marina. A slap shot away here from Buffalo State College. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ad Pro Sports pregame show. I'm Steve Warzela, alongside former Buffalo Sabre and NHL tough guy Andrew Peters. It's great to have you with us. We have a great Atlantic hockey matchup coming at you as RIT set to take on Canisius. And these two teams played Friday night, and RIT dominated. At least it seemed they did in a 3 victory. Well, I'll tell you, from what I, uh, from what I saw, i got to say that RIT dominated that entire game. As you see, a 3-0 win goes without saying. That 3-0 win, you, the Tigers with that win increased their conference unbeaten streak to 14, and they sit atop the Atlantic Hockey standings right now. They haven't lost the conference game since December 4th to AIC, and this team at RIT is led by senior captain Andrew Favitt. Yeah, you mentioned Favitt. You know, here's a guy that leads the... Uh, all right, T Tigers are 36 points, one of the top players in all of, uh, the Atlantic hockey. Um, and it's a big reason why RIT went to the Final Four last no, season. No question about it. Canisius has no one to shake a stick at by themselves. Atlanta Cockies leading scorer last year and certainly one of the all-time leading scorers at Canisius in Corey Conacher. Yeah, you know, you mentioned him too. Seventh in the nation in scoring. I mean, all-time Griffin, 135 points. A player RIT should really keep, keep their eye on, especially in a game like tonight. They're going to have to. He's shifty and he can shoot the puck hard, and he does very often. Will Canisius be able to stop RIT's 14-game unbeaten streak or will RIT roll over Canisius yet again? Atlantic Hockey coming up next. It's Canisius taking an RIT from downtown Buffalo. We return here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet, your leader in local sports, Western New York's only sports network. Welcome back live here to Buffalo State. Play just underway. Canisius College and RIT. The Tigers breaking the puck in early into the zone. 40 seconds into this opening period. Haltigan steps up into the slot, shoots one. It's gloved down by Copa Bianco as he makes the opening save in this game and tests his glove over the freshman who hails from Mississauga, Ontario. A little, a little, little bumping early there. Got their, uh, got Canisius bumping Favitt early. <laughs> I think they know who to keep their eye out, out for. Yeah, Altigan and Fabbitt, certainly one of the leading scorers in this team, as we talked about, the leading scorer, 36 points this season for RIT. And an RIT team that defeated Canisius on Friday night in a 3-0 shutout. I know, Andrew, you have an interesting stat about that. We'll talk about that in just a moment at our first stoppage. Great move inside, cuts the front camera, Burt could hold. Another shot, can't be able to save the rebound right there, it's gone! Puck was loose. Nobody could collapse on it. And therefore, it will be Adam Mitchell that gets the goal for RIT. That stat doesn't seem to be holding true just yet. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Mitchell, that picks up his 10th goal of the season. The Crofton, Maryland native. Boy, did they, did they not just leave off what happened Friday here early going? A minute and eight seconds into this one. Well, it happens in a scrum in front of the net. you got to just clear it out as quick as you can. If your goaltender's on his back and they don't clear it out, dangerous things can happen. Thus a goal. Turnover at center. Gibbons couldn't handle. Comes back for Rauch, the captain of this Canisius squad. Goes D to D. Up on the wing. The far side corner. Bower the first one in there. Digs away in. Comes out, pops onto the stick of Law. Law. Swung at it, missed. Comes out to Burt, who chips it off the boards, but not of the zone. Burt regroups, and he comes out the center. Burt just chips it in, 
and gets off for a change. Five skaters new for RIT. That was a patented play right there. Get over the red line, chip. Get it and over get the off. red line and get it deep. <laughs> Down the right side wing. Hits the brakes and pulls back as Scott Jinks. RIT takes out center and Colton Bianco got a piece of it. Comes right back out of the top. Holtigan shifts it down low. Looking in the corner. Finds Kolovecchia. Holtigan right back down again to the corner. Centering pass out of front. That one's stolen. And it's taken off the stick. Sullivan had it for the moment. The grips will clear. Icing waved off. Canisius makes some changes. Starting goaltender Shane Matalora played it right back down the ice. RIT right out of the gate here as hard as they can. Cycling the puck down deep. Can't get around how much speed they have. They're very quick. This is a much a little bit bigger ice surface than they have at RIT. And their neutral zone is very tiny for RIT back at Ritter Arena. The game they won Friday night. And they're so so speedy that that neutral zone just becomes deadly for other teams. Backhand pass on the boards. Looking to get it out and does. Garcella trying to get there. Pokes it by the defense. He raises up. He's got Shoop with him. Shoop down the wing. Shoop cuts the front of the shot. Rebound comes out. Save made by Matalora. Right back to offense. RIT transition game. Saracino, the backhand save made again. Kevin Bianco, heck, came up with that one. Shoot, backhands it. Chipped down. Scarcella with Lindsay just chipped in. Good rush back and forth. Two back on and one forth. and then back and forth. Goalie almost had an assist there. The pad save into the assist. Kicked down direct on the far side from Favitt. Shifted right back up the boards. Taken by Conacher, his leading score. Conacher cuts the middle, hits some space, but it's poke checked away, and right back, here they come. Lynch, right wing side, goes around, hits the brakes, pulls back, wait, winds up, drives one on net, and Copa Bianco makes the save. We talked about Conacher earlier before the game in his shot. You think RIT's watched some video on him? The way they played him right there? Well, the defense didn't give any, they took the gap away right away. That was a perfect, that was very well executed. There's a replay as Lynch comes out, drills one on net, and that's what your goaltender wants to see at the top of the crease to make the save. All right, T so far, Andrew, getting the puck in the zone along the half boards and then just hitting the brakes and looking out the center. Just playing a, a simple road game. They have they have more they have more fans here than uh, Canisius does right now. Shot on net, save made by Matalora. All right, T opened it up a minute and eight seconds in. We'll take a break. Curing cancer takes teamwork and the latest, most state-of-the-art technology. At Roswell, we have it all. Not only do we have world-renowned physicians and teams, but also the latest advances from robotic surgery to imaging to radiation and chemotherapy. Together, our teams can offer the very best treatment options for patients with cancer. At Roswell, we spend every second of every day thinking about how best to prevent, treat, and cure cancer. Where else but Roswell? Welcome back. 1-0 RIT scores first, courtesy of Adam Mitchell. The break in on goal, the shot that came in. Here was a look at that goal again. Kobiela thought he had it. Loose play, and there's Mitchell Johnny on the spot to jam it into the back of the cage. Over the top of that man, Toki, Tony Kobianco from Mississauga, Ontario, the freshman, 6'2", 190. He's got a 3-2-2 two two record, 2-6 two all goals against, and a 9-2-7 save percentage. Face off to the left side of Shane Matalora. Face off taken by Ben Lynch as it's won as Law goes into the corner with it. On the far side, Law tips it behind, goes after it. Digs it free. Chips it behind the net. Stick handling play. And he just comes out, back to the top. Here's a chance for Rauch, lost the handle, gets it right back. Then he launches one, it's knocked down away to the net. Hit one of his own players in front. Went off Gibbons. Dicato looks near side, finds Brenner. Brenner, long pass, intercepted at center by Lindsay, who sends it right back in. Spivak drives it around, caroms along the boards, and clears right back to center. 
going, going. That one's coming back. No, it's not. It was waved off last minute. They're saying it touched one of the Kanisha's players. Halt again. Looks D to D. And it's chipped in by Atkins Waller. Third behind the net. West Love. Scarcilla. Nipsey Doodle. Penalty coming up here. You extend the leg. You shall feel shame in the box. Not sure that was deliberate, but it's a good call. We are talking about that stat a little earlier. Three shutouts, is it? Three shutouts. Three so shutouts. Four. four shutouts. Four shutouts, all followed by losses. Well, a loss, I think, initially, right? Then two ties. Well, had no wins after a shutout. Exactly. Well, you think after a shutout, you're going to come out and play, play just as hard the next night. But uh, that's tough. That's a tough stat to, to, to have on your resume. But they keep playing the way they are here. They should be all right. When we talked about that loss, that shutout loss they had was to AIC back in December 4th. They got a shut up the night before, made a loss to AIC. And AIC currently sits second last in Atlanta Cocky. That's something you expect from the powerful RIT Tigers. Here's Rauk, outlet pass. Off the skates of Forsman into the zone. Carried in by Mosier, one of the assistant captains this year. Mosier looks in front, decides the wheel behind. Cycles behind the net. Out in front, off the stick of Sullivan. And RIT will just launch it down. Good play there by Kanisha's getting it in, but RIT with open space, Andrew, on this wide ice surface can clear it down easily. Well, this bigger ice surface definitely be uh, benefits a team like RIT with the amount of speed they have. We've already talked, touched on that. That's a no-brainer. Scarcella into the zone, spin move, holds the puck. Cleared across, far side, Love shot deflected, loose in the slot. Love will hold this one in. Love shoots through traffic, goes off a skate. Shoop, looking back for Danforth. Danforth down low, Scarcella far side to Westlove. Westlove shot deflected and it goes wide near corner. Scarcella grabs it, looks down low to Shoop with it. Power play here, Conacher down low with it, looks for him and finds him. Conacher back to the top, off the skate of Scarcella. Will Kanish is able to hold it in? Just barely, Danforth into the slot, shoots one and the club save made by Matt Alora. I don't know a whole lot about penalty killing. <laughs> But I do know that I've had to watch my, my teammates kill a few off for me. So I will say, one of the, one of the great things I noticed about RIT is how active their stick, how active their sticks are in the lanes. Always, their, their bodies are in shooting lanes. Their sticks are always moving, poke checking. You, you know, you saw a play there where um, one of the Kings players had a good chance, poked away. They get the puck out. That's what goalies love. And it feels great with the guy in the penalty box too. You know he's happy. Absolutely, especially if you get away unscathed. Falling down in the far side corner with Scott Jenks. Lost an edge. We'll have to go see Taylor Anderson, the new equipment manager this year for Canisius, who played goaltender last year for Canisius. Coco Bianco played back for Jenks. He gets run over behind him, and that is Sean Murphy buries him. That one's intercepted by Haltigan. Haltigan looking right back. Icing waved off. Racing into the zone is Mitchell. Mitchell has the only goal so far in this game. Left there. Scooped up on the wing by Hartley. Back to the point, Saracino. Back to Burt. Saracino works it across. The shot through traffic deflected in front. Noise took it. Cameron Burt looking for space. Spins back into the corner. Look to center. Got taken into the boards and was held on to for a moment by Bohr. Forsman. Nice sauce pass, but couldn't connect. And Law was pushed into the wall. Buck is loose back in the RITN. Noise. Back pedals. Spins along the wall. Caught past Conacher. Then he'll backhand it out to open space. No one there. Third time in the first eight minutes, I'm going to mention their speed. You know, they play a physical game as well. And, if you, you know, when you skate a lot faster than the other team, those hits hurt just a little bit more. Here's Mosier, the wrecking ball, who's had quite a few hits in his day here, Canisius. Saucer pass across for Brennan. Or Brenner. Into the zone. That pass slapped away up center. Conacher chips it forward. Nice through the legs pass. As sent down to the ice was Eric Rex. Rex having a great season. 20 points on the year for the Canisius forward. Fabin outlets. Picado drives it in. Knocks the stick of Shoop out of his hands. That's a powerful shot. The stick goes flying. But here comes Canisius right back into his zone. Scarcella shoots, puck up in the air, they whack at it, it's loose. Scooped away by RIT, but not out. Jenks holds it in, Scarcella shoots, that one's kicked away by Matt Allure for RIT. 
Down low. Shoot. A drag play. Loose. Lindsay shoots wide. Rout holds this one in back down low for Scarcella. Scarcella roughed up in the corner. Shoot comes in to bail him out. Then right back down low, Lindsay. Cycle down low in the right wing corner. Kanisha's trying that cycle. It's working for a little bit, but RIT stepped in the lane. I'm sorry, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you cold here. I'm just, I'm just I'm loving this game. This is a great game. You talk about hockey. You know, everyone wants to watch the NHL version. This college hockey version is just outstanding. I don't know the history of these two teams, but I, I, I think uh, they might not like each other. They might not like it, but we're liking it here. One nothing to score here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Easiest way to spread the word? Talk to a Ford owner, Mike. I am driving a Ford Focus. What a coincidence. How's that working out? I love it. I save a lot of money on gas with this car. It's exactly what I needed. Look at that. You got her toenails painted, too. Safety important? Very important. It's got six standard airbags. Got the safety, got the quality. I think we've covered everything. I think you're right. Spread the word, because now you can get a Ford Focus with 0% APR for 60 months or $3,000 cash back. Well, at this point, I think we should say goodbye. <laughs> Welcome back here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Tony Kopobienko, who's starting in goal. Coach Dave Smith elected to go with the freshman tonight over the junior from London, Ontario, Dan Morrison. As you can see there, his stats on screen. And so far, other than the, the blemish that he was on his back for, couldn't make a clean save, he's played very well. He's he has, been tested too, Andrew. He has been tested by a good hockey team. We talk about the series. Well, these two teams certainly have a history. Well, since 80 and 81, and I am reading this, so I don't want people to think that I'm that intelligent to know it. The record for RIT holds is 42, 10, and 1. That's a lot of games to play each other in, in, in a, a short in, shortened season, too. Absolutely, and uh, the only team they know better would be Mercyhurst College, the Lakers. Uh, get off the Mercyhurst topic, would you? <laughs> We're tired of hearing it. I have a Mercyhurst championship ring. Oh, I don't know about that. Cut the cord. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Well, they played the Mercer's Lakers just a few more times than they have RIT because they were in the same conference for all the time, and RIT's new to the conference back in 06. Forsman, the outstretched pass, deflected out of play by Law, and look out below. Well, those passes come in streaming, don't they? Well, I'll tell you a quick story. <laughs> Watching warm up one, one, one game, and well, I wasn't playing, so I was watching warm up. And a uh, guy was reading a newspaper along the side of the, uh, the side of the glass, and the puck went over the glass right through the newspaper. He was escorted down to the locker room for stitches. Did it leave a hole in the newspaper? Well, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna guess that's that's awful. Murphy, who had the check on Jenks earlier, sends it in. Forsman gets a piece of him to slow him down. Murphy. Settles into the corner, kicks it out off his stick, and then up the boards, back to the point. Here's Noise, steps up, shoots through traffic, off a leg. Regrouped by Murphy, looking down low, centering pass in front, bouncing puck, and just backhanded wide by RIT. Pass through center, settled down by Noise again. On the far boards, it's shoveled in. Racing after it first was Kornakia, couldn't get there in time. Here comes the Griffs, three on two on the rush. Up the middle to Sharon on Matalora. Will regroup and make the save. Ben Danford walked in and took it. But up to the task once again was Matalora. The defenseman who hopped into the rush right here. Danford's had two shots tonight, and Matalora's found both. I like what uh, Decado did there in front of the net. Or Decoto, or De in French it's Decoto. In America it's Decado. What is it in uh, another language? We get German. Could not tell you. All right. Just clearing the clearing in front of the net, let, making sure that nobody touches his goaltender. Face off one by RIT. As they battle the near side corner to the right side of Matalora. Puck squirts out into the slot. Taken and jam right back off the boards. Mitchell slams it out, but not out of the zone. Rauk sends it right back down. Takato poked it behind the net. Both teams still battling, comes back to the point. Jenks holds it in the backhand for the moment, and then it's poked out of the zone. Being chased down by Burt. Slap up back to Burt again. Burt with a move, but it's taken away from him by Lindsay. Up to Shoup. Shoop across the red line, rifles it in, and hits the brakes to come back for a change. 
winding it up from behind the net. Altigan crushed along the wall. Pass comes out. Ahead for Brenner. Brenner far side. Shot right on. Save made. Rebound pops out. But it's scooped away by the Griffs. Buck is loose. Griffs have it again. Down the right wing side. Dancing into the zone. Far side. Danforth got knocked off the puck and it's cleared back to center. Love. Over to Rex. Left there. Nifty pass. Mosier drags it down low. Backhanded in front. Went off a skate. Buck is loose in the skates of Mosier. Back for Conacher. Mosier. Waiting, Conacher looking down low. Rex for Conacher through his legs, and it finds Brenner's stick. Brenner being watched by Forsman and Jenks. They'll chip it in, and he and Lynch turn back to the bench for changes. 7.46 to go here in the opening period. RIT leads 1-0. Janda, poke check. Danowski grabs it. Back to Forsman. They stretch it all the way down the ice to Matalora. Icing waved off. First, good, first shot in a little bit that Canadians uh, had on net has been from their own end. 160 feet away. Janda left it back. Saraceno looking to cross ice to the far side, looking for Smith. Found him. Smith controlling the puck for a moment, then was nudged off, and Danowski picks it away. Saraceno led it right back in. That one's knocked down by Amherst. Native Pat Kenny chips it in. He'll turn back for fresh legs, along with the rest of the Canadians forwards. Janda looking forward, directed in, and again, out of play. The whole team's got to get that chip play down. They don't have that down yet, apparently. Well, you know what? I will say this, though. As, as good as RIT is and as fast as they are, this Canisius, this Canisius team will not quit. They are playing very hard. They're getting, trying to get the puck in. They're trying to, you know, penetrate, you know, get their, get some licks on their defense, get some shots on net. Just a matter of time, they have to be patient. This is a good hockey team they're playing. Patient indeed. Wayne Wilson, as you see there, the head coach of RIT in his 12th season there. Yeah, I talked to Wayne earlier this week, and on Thursday he said, yeah, my throat was killing me. I had a cold, and I tried to fight something off. And he said he was telling me that the referees by far loved me because I wasn't yelling at all on Friday night. And he's just getting over. He's in the back end here on this game Sunday. By the way, folks, if you want to check out hard-hitting action, one place to do this college hockey. The other place is certainly the Buffalo Bandits. You can check out all their games right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Buffalo Bandits here. Great game to check out down at the arena if you ever get a chance to go down there. Love the Bandits. Grew up watching them. I used to go to all the games with the yacht. You did? Oh, it was unbelievable. Boy, that place, I think my favorite part of that when they had Bandits games, that place used to actually shake. It was. Uh, they used to have the best slogan, we'll sell you the seat, you'll only need the edge. I'll never forget it. And it was so true. Everybody was always standing up on their feet. I think that was the same slogan for when you dropped the gloves. Yeah. Until, until I got knocked out, then everybody sat down. <laughs> Through center, Law takes it down to the right wing corner. Law and Bower. His outlet. Law dragged it past and slapped away off his stick up the right wing boards. Love sends it right back down low. Law reached, couldn't grab it. Knowles out the center and down the ice. Icing against RIT. You know, interesting on TSN I saw earlier in ESPN, they're talking about the best fights in hockey after you saw that, that brawl between Montreal and Boston. And yours was number two with Ray Emery. I don't have a comment. It was one of them anyway. But it's amazing, though. If you, you look at the, the history of the hockey, the, the, the NHL, and how the game has changed, you know, and a, and a lot of the toughness has been taken out of it. You look at what's happened the last little while. You've had the goalie fight, a few goalie fights, then you had the Islanders game the other night, and sure. you also had Washington Boston. I think the game's starting to turn back a little bit to, to, uh, to the way it used to be played. Well, hardcore hockey, hey, pardon me, it wasn't the best fights, it was just the best goalie, goalie fights. fights. Oh, goalie yeah. fights. I, um, I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> I'm sure you did, you were there. A pass across, looking to slap it home. Knocked away by the defensive RIT once again, and they are back to offense right away. Here's Knowles. Saucer pass through the legs, looking for Murphy as he got ragged all through the middle. Surprised there wasn't a penalty call there. Shoop knocked over as he was the guilty party earlier. Murphy, a little, little umbrage to that before. A little payback, never hurts. He's a feisty one, I like him. Murphy. Certainly one of the guys who like to get things going, one of the captains on this RIT squad. There's definitely a reason why he wears the C on his shirt, and, and he's playing like it. From what, I, from what I can tell, he's probably the kind of guy that plays like that game in and game out, doesn't know how to take a shift off, and those are the kind of guys you like to have on your team. Absolutely. Certainly a tough kid indeed. Pass up the wing for Mitchell. 
Mitchell drives up the center, finds Hartley. Hartley leaves it across. Burst the shot as he falling down, and the save is made by Kovienko. Delayed penalty coming up here against Canisius. Well, I can't say his name, but the freshman tested again. Another great save. Burt looking for Saraceno, and it hopped over his stick, so Andrew Favitt has to chase it down. Tony Copobianco. Yeah, Copacabana. <laughs> Mitchell right back in. Mitchell dragged, lost, and it's touched up by Westlove for a whistle and a delayed power play. Well, now a power play will come up as it's going to go for RIT, a hooking call against the Griffs. Duncan McKellar will sit down two minutes, the guilty party. He'll sit for two minutes, he'll feel shame, then he'll go free. <laughs> That's who, quoted by who? Uh, Denny, Denny Lemieux. Lemieux. Denny Lemieux. Slashing uh, Benman the puck. Uh, <laughs> Just uh, big with no manners. Back to the point, Fabbit. Still one of the best hockey movies of all time. The, the best hockey movie, although I'm pretty tired of seeing it. That's you, see it you see it too many times. What a road trip. In the near corner, Lynch looks back for Fabbitt. Back to Lynch in the half boards. Looking down low. All the way around the net was Brenner. On the far side, taken by Noyes. Noyes. Out in front for Brenner. Trying to make a move. Comes back to Noyes. Behind the net. Sent it all the way back to Saraceno. Far side, Noyes. Shot, Fabbitt. Save. Slapped out of the air by Lynch. Back to Lynch, near side. Lynch steps up. Doesn't shoot. Favitt off his skate, back to Lynch. Looks across Saraceno. His shot knocked down by Lindsay. The Griffs cannot clear. Great puck support and pressure, but RIT. Into the slot, the shot, they score! Power play goal for Brenner. It's 2 nothing RIT. That was a great goal. Walked out of the corner, looked off Favitt. Defenseman bit, and he took it to the net for a good shot and a goal. Tyler Brenner, the right winger from Linwood, Ontario. His 16th goal of a season. Boy, look at that shot there. Just kept it low right between the wickets. Watch him look him off here. Looks off his defenseman. Gives him a nice little gap. Goes to the net. A little fist bump. Looked, looked like he knew what he was doing. Pardon me, that's uh, his 22nd goal of the season. He's got 16. He only has 22nd, or 22? 22. Uh, in, in Atlanta hockey, he has 16 this year. That's not bad. That's not a bad year. No, not at all. <laughs> like I said, he looked like he, he knew what he was doing on that shot. When you play the first unit power play, you might know something about scoring goals. What if you never play the power play? What does that mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> That puck was tipped away, and storming out the center is Danford. Lower with him. On the wall, slapped away as he was rubbed out along the boards by Decato. Forsman sends it in, and it'll be directed out by Matt Alora. Boy, you talked about Kanisha's not quitting. They're still driving the puck in and chasing it down. Matt Alora giving his team time, just knocking it out of play, taking away the Griffin medal. You just gotta, you gotta let your team carry the momentum. If you have it, you want to hold on to it as long as you can. Inside three minutes to go. Rauch walks the middle. His shot. That one goes wide right. Four's been able to hold it in. Puck is loose. Bouncing, trickling toward the line. Set right back in off the backhand. O'Sullivan. Kenny. Shields, then shifts. Down to Donowski. Back to Kenny. Lost the puck. Popped up for Knowles. Knowles up through noise. Right about going noise, taken out by the goalpost. He jumped out of the way of Kopienko, but he could not dodge the goalpost. Gets a hit on the score, the score sheet, doesn't he? We're talking about uh, good hockey movies. What was the what was the one with DB Sweeney? He became the figure skater. Oh yeah. Edge, something edge? Cutting edge. Cutting edge. Now that's your favorite movie, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely, all time. <laughs> I actually auditioned for that, but I didn't make it. I wish. Well, that's because you actually had to be able to skate. Yeah, I can't. Shot! Oh, what a pad save by Matalora as he took it away from Conacher looking far side. Just one of those get the puck to the net plays. 
And he was looking for that far post, but Matalora kicked out the left pad. Just calm in the net. He has the best win percentage in Atlanta Cocky as a goaltender, and also the best save percentage as a goaltender in Atlanta Cocky. And Mitch Mitch Cabana. Cabana. <laughs> is saved again by that man <laughs> described by Andrew Peters. 2 0 RIT here for the Buffalo State Ice Arena. Ice seems to be a lot of grips. Arcella just lost an edge there. There was a shot from Conacher. The girls were out here earlier and went into overtime. They uh, they probably tore it up pretty good. Buff State beat Elmira in overtime. That was an exciting game. It was indeed. Former uh, Canisius assistant coach Greg Fargo, who now is the head coach for Elmira. Unfortunately, his team couldn't pull it out. That puck chipped up by Forsman. Halt again after it. That was intercepted. The shot just missed the net. Coming up, a stick of Kyle Gibbons. Boy, he's about a turnover in a dangerous spot. Yeah, that's... Uh... Bower back to Gibbons. Off his skate, couldn't hold on. Hartley, three on two rush. Hartley waiting for the pass back. Now yeah, he gets it, and Hartley just couldn't handle the pass. Thought he was going to pass it early. Had to fake. Did Mitchell. But then he decided to give it to him. Less than a minute to go here in the opening period. RIT leads. Chip down the ice. Danford has to chase after it. Danford nearly blasted into the wall by Brenner. Another check. Rex is slow to get up by Andrew Favitt. There's nothing better than seeing your first line who can go out there and score a goal, you know, every three, four shifts. Finish all their checks. Skate as hard as they can, solid defensively, great in the power play, and finish all their checks. That's got to be that's a huge key to their success. No question, they've been finishing their checks here. Brenner drags to the outside. Spinning away is Lynch. Lynch, the backhand held in. Sauce right back in. Looking down the lane for Favitt. You can see why Favitt has so many points. Just a clever, you know, clever thinking right there. Just trying to trick the goalie with a little tip. Unfortunately, he missed it. But you can see why he's a nifty player. Absolutely. Just trying to get a piece of the puck on the way to the net. Redirect it past Kovienko. But he was there that time. After 20 minutes of play here from Buff State, RIT's Adam Mitchell and Tyler Brenner have them a two-goal lead. We'll take a break. Our intermission report coming up next, right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Network. Petey the Golden Griffin, a mythological creature, by the way. What's That's his name? Petey the Griffin, mythological creature, half eagle, half, uh, I forget what the other part of him is, but he's a mythological creature. I'd love to have that as a pet, though. That'd be awesome. Until it turned on you. And that would be a dangerous situation, <laughs> absolutely. The Golden Griffin's getting ready to take the ice once again. A look into the eyes of Tony Copabianco. Boy, is he serious. He's thinking about the next play coming up. He's played a great game. We talked about RIT, shots on net. This goaltender, Copa Cabana, has been outstanding. <laughs> I'm not going to stop saying it. So call it cheesy, say what you want, but I'm not going to. I'd rather say that and joke with it than mess it up unintentionally. So, but uh, this game could be, it could be worse than 2 0. He's been playing great. It certainly could be worse than 2 0. RIT's had a ton of shots. It's 13 for the first period. Canisius at 7. 13. But people hear 13 shots, they think only 13 shots, but we're talking 13 quality shots. Right. And this goaltender was, was tested early and has, been, has continued to be tested. I think he's been fantastic. That doesn't count the shots that were blocked or the shots they missed because they've been shooting like crazy. Right, right. 11th season for Coach Dave Smith behind the bench. Fifth as the head coach, pardon me, sixth as the head coach here at Canisius. He's been at Bowling Green. And he's also been at Mercier's for a long time as well before he came up to Canisius. His record versus RIT, not the best, 4, 12, and 0. But it's the next game that counts, and that one's here today here at Puff State. And they're not out of it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right behind him walked B.J. Adams, the Bowling Green coach at 06. He graduated from there. And then John Degano, who's from Harvard. Boy, none of us would get to Harvard, that's for sure. 
speak for yourself. But Please. <laughs> I know you're. Smart. I went to Ridley College. All right. I. Oh, my dad. My dad was the head of the AD, the, the athletic department there, so that's why I got in. But still, I went there. Yes. Uh, there you go. Lindsay overskates, gets it back as the ice glistening from the great Zamboni job. And the puck goes into the zone. Halt again goes and retreats. Worked up ahead. Ekinswiler. That one's dumped in. Well, the one thing you have to talk about is the contingent of RIT fans that make the trips all over the place. It seems, we talked about Andrew, it's more a home game for RIT than it is for Canisius. That shot right on. Matalora has to go back out and grab the rebound. Escarsoa centered it on him. As an ex-player, I will say this. It helps so much when you have some fans in your corner. We would go into a place like Florida or Washington, and they would always have Buffalo fans there, and it felt good that you weren't alone. You weren't there doing it all by yourself, like when you went to Toronto or Montreal or all those Canadian places where you were the only people in there that lived in the United States. My sister lives just outside of Tampa, and she says when she goes to the games, it's a lot of Sabre fans. It, yeah, it's great. It's great support down there. All the snowbirds. <laughs> Absolutely. Mosier, the wrecking ball, loops it out in front as he just knocked down his check behind the net. Now here's a foot race. Favitt gets down the left wing side, looks in front, peels it back for Lynch, shoots one off the side of the net. Centering pass, Lynch off his skate, comes back to Favitt, turns and fires one. Kopienko makes the save, a rebound pops in the corner for Brenner. Smushed along the boards by Jenks, comes all around near side. Noise holds it in. Run into by Conacher. He's small, but he lays the lumber. Jenks pushed into the wall by Brenner. Down low was Saraceno to hold it in. Chip right back in by Favitt. Far circle, stolen away. That pass brought out to center. Mosier being worked on from behind by Burt. Mosier just backhands it into the corner. Canisius turns back for changes. Saraceno up ahead. Noise, cross ice pass connects on the tape to Burt. Burt trying to work his way around the defense, but it's there in his way. Right back to center, Gibbons. Forward, shot from Law. Slapped away with the defense. With a gap control here from RIT has been awesome because Kenny has a tough time getting into the zone and clearing and getting clean passes. They want to keep him to the outside, and they want to keep him at zero. Burt to Hartley, his shot knocked away by Forsman. Spivak corrals it. Dicato down low. Cameron Burt once again. Hartley, stolen. Gibbons looks across. Law can't find it. Rauch high in the air, off the ceiling, and we'll have a whistle. Never a bad play off the ceiling. <laughs> I think that was my go-to. In trouble off the ceiling. Because you can't go over the glass anymore in the NHL in your own defensive zone. Ask Brian Campbell about that. <laughs> Face off to the left side of Kopienko. Kovecchia. Kovecchia along with Scarcella. One by Canisius as Lindsay leaves it ahead for Scarcella who starts racing in. Hits the brakes over the line. Shoots one. Matalora gets a piece off to the right side. Buck is loose. RIT scoops it forward. Picked up by Kolovecchia again. He's got a trailer. Kolovecchia hits pass across the shot over the top of the net as the first play was made defensively by West Love. Great defensive play. Again, plays you make. Your goaltender, new, hasn't played in a while. Getting him in there, helping him out. Went down to block it. Pardon me, that was Scott Jenks, the Bathurst New Brunswick native, growing his hair out this year a little bit. Got a chance to talk to him before the game. He's saying, just going to grow it out a little bit, see how it goes. The hockey flow, the they hockey call flow. it. That's the joke. And when he, when he's done with hockey and he gets into the real world, he'll learn that he has to cut it and look presentable. <laughs> it's chipped in by Canisius. Did you have that problem too? Did you ever want to cut your hair? Oh, I, I played for Lou Lamorello last year, and it was he had to be clean shaven and short hair. Golovecchio in the zone. Hits the page of the Steinbrenner's book. Yes. Johnny Damon had to shave his beard off That's and right. cut his hair. That pass set right back in, but it will be icing against RIT. 
And that team will not be able to make a change, but Kanisha shall. 16.41 to go here in period number two. RIT leads nothing. Seems, Andrew, you know, they've got a couple of shots, but through the neutral zone, it's been a little back and forth hockey. It hasn't been anything real crisp. Uh, it's just, you know, I think, again, I think uh, RIT's got a 2-0 got a, a lead. I think they'd like to make it three, make it four, but I think Kanisha's is kind of playing tentative a little bit. I don't think they want to give them a chance, but I, I don't think they're doing enough to, to create chances either. That puck's flipped down the ice yet again, and it's coming right back on the ice. Two in a row. Well, there's no one else to go, nowhere else to go. Just get it down the ice. No chance of turning it over in your own zone. I don't have a problem with that at all. Love the no-touch icing, though. I think it's a rule that every league and every level should, should you know, take on. Too many players get hurt. Well, they've added a, a little little bylaw to the no-touch icing. It has to do with if a player from the other team starts to beat a player down from the other team, they, there's a chance they might wave it off. And I think that that is good for the rule. Because the, you know, the used to be is oh. Mosier just lays out X and Weiler. That hit, that's the kind of hit right there that can turn momentum. Give your team, uh, give your team a little spark. Saraceno, backhand down low. Scooped up by Kornakia. Conacher in there battling. Puck pops free. Find its way out to Law. Law charging forward. Looks over for Mosier. Across the red line. Dumped in. Law heads deep as Mosier heads off. Noise. Kornakia left ahead. Knowles into the zone. Knowles left wing side. Blocker save made by Kobe Bianco. Back to the top. Waiting. Shot redirected. Saraceno took it. Murphy down low. Along with Kornak, yeah, that one's broken up. Kanisha's out to center. And Rex is met rudely by Saraceno. Saraceno both slides teams, the back end. Both teams here not afraid to get their nose dirty. All the way up, Lynch into the zone. Lynch has to slow things down as Rauch stays with him. The captain for Kanisha takes Lynch into the boards. Lynch digs the puck free out of his skates, sends the backhand up the middle, broken up by Forsman, and that pass will go right into the Kanisha's bench over the head of trainer... Koki Takano. Luckily, he's only four foot two, or else he would have gotten hit in the head. Everyone's safe on the Kanisha's bench. We can go to break. 2 0 RIT here on Time Warner. Once again, Petey showing his prowess over the young Griff fans. And face off at center. On that one, Spivak has to track it down and heads behind the net. If I were Petey, I, you are which Petey. I am yeah, you Petey. Are Petey. But if I were that Petey, I would stay on this side of the of the bleachers. You don't want to go over there to the other side. No. I'm not, not sure the, how not, Griffins and Tigers get along. Not to the uh, not to the RIT side. Dicato into the zone, is shot. Got a piece of it to Kopienko. Whirling around, back to the top, here's Spivak. He shoots off the leg of Lindsay on the way to the net. Westlove grabs it, looks out the center for Scarcella. Three on two, Canisius. Scarcella into the zone. Lindsay drives one. That one goes off the stick of Spivak. The defense once again getting a piece. Jenks, Danford, out of play. And a fan who's unaware takes one. Hopefully they're okay. Hit that girl down there. She was, she's tough. She didn't even phase her. She's having a chuckle right now. She's she, having a good unless, laugh. Unless she's crying and they're trying to make her feel better. I'll tell you who's not crying is Wayne Wilson right now. And his team's up 2 nothing. the glass again out of play <laughs> cheers rain out we'll take a look once again before out of plays it hits a griff fan she didn't even spill her coffee no she didn't i thought that's I saw a tim horton's coffee you don't spill tim horton's coffee that is priceless sacrilege sacrilegious is right 
The battle on the boards. Nice play by Burt through the legs. He backhands it down low. RIT back to the point. Shooting one is halted again. That one's blocked. Puck is loose. Law takes it out the center as he gets pulled down. No Cannot penalty call. There's not a penalty on that play. Wow. Centering pass broken up by Canisius. Law finishes his check. Open up some space ahead for Mosier. Mosier bearing down on his man, Exenweiler. He was looking for some redemption on the play for Law. Burt into his zone. Outside, inside, but Jenks gets a leg in the way. Bouncing puck, finally settled down by the Tigers. Turns, shoots, save, make oh, up. Oh, what a save. Air. How did he make that save? Holy mackerel, Mitchell looking for number two. Kofi Echo says, no dice. Look at this on the replay. Doesn't Mitchell play. goes back door, gets a piece out of the air. He does not, he's not playing like a freshman, I can tell you that right now. Off the face off, right into the chest. Once again, a Copianco. Look at that save. Diving across right to left to get the glove on it. Here's Pat Kenny. His pass over. Shoveled in by Donowski. Kenny drives in after it. Takes on his check in Saraceno. Wins the battle in his skates. Across. And Donowski even shot right on. Out of the corner. Came McKellar, but he couldn't get a piece of it. Donowski, quick release off his stick. But a great feed from Kenny. Forsman. First time in a little while that uh, Matalora, if you will, has been tested. This RIT team has been... Uh, Score! Right down the slot. Nobody was there. Mike Janda found it upstairs where Mama puts the kids to bed. 3-0 RIT. I didn't even get a chance to finish what I was about to say. RIT has been all over Canisius this period. And Mike Janda... Glenn Illinois, his 10th goal of the season. And that was a pretty one. Took it on his backhand to the forehand. What do you say where Mama hides the what? Where Mama puts the kids to bed. Obviously an homage to the um, obviously great Rick Jenneret. A shot tested again, Matalora. Certainly a venerable announcer and he's timeless. The best of all time. I would concur, absolutely. Nobody does it better. Pay some tribute in some way. Jenks, long shot, missed the net. And uh, it's not just Buffalonians or Buffalo Sabres that think that either. Players all over the league think he's the best. Yeah, there are a lot of Canadian fans as well that come down right across the border that say, you know, he's the best of all time. He is the, he is the best. Ah, uh, you know what? He is the best. I love him, and I love, but, you know, Bob Cole, yep. Harry Neal, Tandem, the old hockey night in Canada. No question. Bob Cole used to say, no score. He used to love it. Too many men for Canisius. They got away with it. Wrapped around the boards in the near side. Knowles shovels it on net. And Bianco steers it aside. Dan Ford chips it out of the zone. Exon Weiler sends it right back up. Slapped out of the air by Scarcilla. Jumps past the D. Scarcilla's in. Shot off the goalpost. Run the T joint. Oh, my goodness. Right off the elbow of the bar. What a nifty move from Scarcella to get it in. Right behind that was Lynch. Scarcella was a great athlete here at Canisius, but at St. Francis High School as well. Won a championship at uh, the ballpark downtown right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. They beat uh, Canisius in the, when he was a senior four years ago. The noise. Across. Gets it back, takes his time through center. Shifts in, back to Lynch. Lynch spins off the check for Mosier. RIT up to the middle, waits, backhand, in front, it's loose in the goal crease, they finally kick it out. But it's held in by RIT. Off a skate, slap right back in, the Tigers will have to tag up. Boy, oh boy. Rauch, up the boards, Law too far. Danowski chasing it down, icing waved off. 
Right back to her direction. Here comes RIT Favitt. Drop for Saraceno. Shoots one right on. Pope Bianco to save. Rebound. A pull right back in is Favitt. Oh boy, we'll see what happens here. Favitt went to the front of the net. Got a shovel that kept Pope Bianco, but they pushed him away. We'll step aside. Do nothing, RIT. Three nothing, RIT leads the Golden Griffins here from Buff State. And watch this transition play. Kolovecki gets the puck here. Little nifty through back behind the back pass to Janda. And he goes bar down. Well, Peters I and mean, Andrew, if you're uh, RIT and Andrew Favitt, share the same name and he sure he's, he'll play the same. He's but not, He's not very happy with uh, being thrown down and not having a power play. but. For the size he is and the, and the amount of points he has, you'd like to see him protected a little more than that. But he can take it. He's a tough kid. 5'7", 160-pound senior. That one's almost redirected into the net. And I think the referees are going to say there's no penalty called there because if we call you or call them, we have to call you for going at the goaltender sure. as the whistle went. So they just let sleeping dogs lie, as they say. A crushing hit on the board, Sullivan, then a check from behind. It's called RIT's going to head to the box, cross-checking. So power play coming up for Canisius. RIT scored a power play goal earlier. Canisius heads the power play. 15.8% they've been converting this year. RIT's kill just by just short of 20 at 19.9%. Big opportunity here for Canisius to get on the board, get themselves back in the game, get a little momentum in their favor. You'll see the check right there. Cross check from Cameron Burke as he sits down for two minutes. And once again, he shall feel shame. Back well, to the point is Danford. By <laughs> we already talked about that. But Denny, Le who? Denny Lemieux. Ah, Lemieux. Goes off the concrete behind the net and we'll have a face off inside the zone. Or how, do they, how, do, how would the U.S. pronounce it? Lemieux? 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 Spivak, Smith, Haltigan, Janda out there on the kill. Shoop. Conacher, Scarcella, Danford, and Love for Canisius. Down low for Conacher, heads behind the net. Mosier lost an edge. But he's able to get over there. Take on Jeff Smith. Alt again shoveled at it. Back to Smith. Smith swings at it and clears it out of the zone with his two iron. He raced over to the bench to get off. Not often you see players go that hard to the, to the bench. Conacher looks across. Love comes into the play. Love all the way around behind Manette. Leaves it back for Conacher. He slides it on the boards. Shoot. Along the wall, fighting for it. Comes free. Love has to regroup at center for Dan Ford. Into Scarcella. Looking across. Conacher can't get the puck away, and it's knocked out by Knowles. Dan Ford right back in. Canisius off the boards, down low for Shoup. Battling going on, and then launched down the ice, high in the air. Hope Bianco has to actually make a save on that one. RIT not giving Canisius too much here on this power play. Never really had a chance to set up as Forsman goes cross ice. It's dumped in by Eric Rex. Matalora plays it off the far boards. Murphy gets a chip on it, goes to the line. Will it clear? It does. Rex retreats, finds Rauch, who just chips it in softly into the corner. Players falling all over the ice. Puck is loose. Rapid attempt to stuff it in with Rex. It pops free. A melee in front. Rex back to the point. Right back for Rex. Rex looks down low. Mosier. Mosier in front back. Door couldn't hang on was Rauch. Rauch. Down low for Rex. Slapped off the concrete. We'll have a whistle. And RIT has killed off the power, the power play. Best chance for Canisius on that uh, PP was a, was a very good one. But... Come up short, still down 3 0. Would have liked to see it 3 1. 3 0 is our score. RIT and Canisius.
No break. No break. No break. Thought he heard the music in the background. Well, good game so far for your IT. Canisius and Dave Smith, tough for them. They haven't even scored a goal on the weekend yet. That's difficult. I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I mean, you, you touch on that, you, you, you're talking about a team here. So it's such a good hockey team. I mean, they're they're controlling this game. They've they've taken it. I think they've taken this period to another level by limiting Canisius to the amount of opportunities they get, or even in their own end, getting them in there. Absolutely. You know what we don't limit is the amount of times you can watch this game on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet On Demand in Rochester, Channel 214. Here in Buffalo, it's 946. So you can see RIT play Canisius as many times as you want to, and you can see my awesome co-star here and partner up in the booth, Andrew Peters. Yeah. Uh, too many compliments. Not worthy. <laughs> Sullivan couldn't get it out. Second attempt he does. Burt swings at the hatchet, but he couldn't get the puck off Sullivan's stick. Into his zone is Law. Law held on to. Bower left back down for Law. All freshman line here. You've got Sullivan with Law and Bower, and it tries to play, but Matalora kicks it out. Got a piece of it on the poke check, and then the pad on it. Well, that was a great play out of the corner. Do it himself. Cameron Burt lost it right back in. Sullivan right on! And the save is made by Mandalora. He had Law open on the wide side, but you watched the defenseman drop down in front, took the pass away, and he gave no, no option but to shoot. Goalie made a big save. Sullivan tick, put, picked the puck up. Burt, I forget who he was with, but the miscommunication. Look at Law to the corner. Missed the poke check. Looked like it went off the goal post. Looked like I thought he'd get a pad on it. It looked like it may have been the goal post from that angle. Great job down in the corner. Willie H. The camera view. Conacher comes in the back check. Picks his pocket. Out to center. Kolovecki and Scarcella bump shoulders. Cleared of a line, not out. Smith shot right on. Backhand. Kolovecki couldn't get off clean. It's loose right on top of the crease. Conacher comes in and takes it away. Conacher tripped up and a penalty coming up to RIT yet again. Mike Janda stuck out the leg and took out Conacher. Mentioned two posts, maybe. That's a 3 2 game. If they can uh, cut those in by a quarter inch. <laughs> Scarcella had one off the elbow joint. And then yeah. uh, it was Law that just missed on that post. There's one in the first period down here. Here's Conacher cutting back in. And Janda. Not a, not a ton of chances by Canisius, but when they're getting chances, they're quality ones. See if they can uh, put something together here on the power play. Power play was pretty much ineffective the last time out for Canisius, and now here's a chance down the wing. Gornacki a shot at the backhand, but the back check came quickly. And you're seeing RIT actually pretty much dominating the power play for Canisius. Gibbons sent in. Mosier, Gibbons, Rauch, Peters, Warzala. <laughs> Up here, anyway. Murphy into the zone, down the left wing side, backhand, easy stop for Kopienko, and he's met by Phil Rauch right behind the net. Three on three into the zone. Gibbons in the power play here for Canisius. Rex slapped at it, bounced up in the air, and a great check. Mosier coming back. It's loose, but swept away by RIT. Sean Murphy, very effective player for RIT. Hungry in the puck, good skater. Hart loves to finish checks. And he's kind of reminds me of Scott Mosier for this team. He likes to lay the lumber, and he can score as well. He's had some big hits tonight, that's for sure. Canisius across to Westlove. Winds up. Will he let it go? He does. The shot. Matalora and Shoop launches it over the top of the net. Not a play. Matalora was looking at him saying, please, please. Oh, thank you. Shoop was looking for it. No shoop -a loop there. I think he would uh, love to have it, uh, that opportunity back. Let's see what happens here. Puck comes down. Is it rolling? It could have been standing up. He had, he literally had, that was the only Fraction. opportunity he had to shoot. He could not hold on to it. He couldn't pass it. That was the only option he had. West Love. Conacher back to Love. Loose puck. Diving at it. Taking out Love. A second penalty coming up here. Canisius turns it over to him. Of course they do. 
And now Cameron Burt goes back to the box. Well, a good diving effort, but he tripped him up for the process. 3 nothing game. You're going to have a 5-on-3, 36 in the first uh, power play here. We'd love to see him get one really early and then carry on and have another minute, minute and a half uh, left in the uh, second power play to put themselves right back in this game to a 3-2 game. With, with, you know, by that point, it'll be a, you know, around two-minute mark going into the third period. Down one to this RIT team, the way they've been playing, would not be a bad position to be in. No, and especially as you talked about less than around two minutes to go in the period when you get that momentum coming out of the period at the end of it. Absolutely. Canisius sets up Conacher. Watch him for the one-timer on the off wing here. Danforth goes to the middle. Looks across. Here's Conacher. One-timer. Save made. Loose puck. And cleared away, but not out of the zone. Danforth once again. Gibbons far side on the half boards. Danforth up the middle. Conacher can't shoot. It was rolling. Conacher looks in front. Backhand play. Shoup was looking across for Scarcella. One-time Danforth. Just missed. Big hit along the boards. Conacher looking for a call, not going to get one. Conacher will change, still looking at the referee for a call on that one. First power play is up, so it's a five on four. Bower to the line, not in clean. Sent right back, Danford has to retreat. Forsman for Canisius. Right back to Dan Ford. Looks across. Bower into the zone. Gets in on net. Bower all the way around. We'll set it up from the goal line. Forsman wheels right back to Bower. Hits the brakes, but was poke check. Just inside the line, held in by Forsman. Mosier slaps at it, finds Law. Law going to make his way to the front of the net. It's loose. Taken by Janda. Janda fights off the check of Mosier and just slides it down. Then Janda gets taken up by Mosier, and he's going to get a penalty. Face-off will be inside the Canisius zone. Interference call. Oh, I think that one just goes to Rubbins Racing. That is, uh, that's just pure frustration, I think, right there with the with a power play. I don't know, I didn't see exactly what happened, but I'm guessing power play not producing. A little frustrated. It looked like Janda, well, you can't really tell. Both players made contact. Janda was maybe to try to cut back in, but Mosier, Certainly one of the strongest players on this Canisius squad. Well, he plays that way, too. He's a big boy. He lays some punishing checks. Conacher dragged it, lost it, a chance for RIT, poked away. Scarcella looping around, firing on all cylinders. Here comes Scarcella, blue zone. Oh, boy! Dodges the check, takes out Murphy. Conacher across, the shot just missed by Ralph. It's loose. Scarcella back to the point as he was taken out by Murphy. The shot high. Oh, glove down by Matt Alora. What a shifty move by Scarcella. And it was Murphy who took the brunt on the check. Well, there are two options there for him. One, get killed or get out of the way. <laughs> he turned himself. He, he took off option B and he did it well. Look he at this. He turned himself into a Unbelievable. toothpick. Unbelievable. And he stayed on his feet the whole time. <laughs> Decano had him lined up, at least he thought he did. He, he, was, takes licking, Murphy. he was licking his chops. Well, how often do you see a player able to dodge a check like that at the last second? Power play now for RIT. Center on the boards, they'll be able to set up. Lynch back to the top for Knowles. Noise lost his stick at the point, was going to go back and retrieve it. He does. Lynch, here's a chance. Lynch down the left wing side. Right in. Favitt fans on it. Boy, he was looking to gun that one home when he fanned on it. RIT coming back. He really did try to put everything he had, all of his little body, into that shot. And now a delayed penalty coming up here against Canisius. It'll be touched up by the Griffs. And oh boy, a five on three penalty. Power play, excuse me coming to the Tigers, as if they need more momentum. Not something I think the coach is happy with when you take a five on three against one of the strongest teams in, in hockey, college hockey. Sir, absolutely, well, they're a good team. College hockey, <laughs> college hockey. My uh, corporate challenge team was pretty dominant, I think. <laughs> what was the score in your game? I don't know, I just, I, I, I know exactly how many points I had, so that's all I cared about. 
Did you win it all? No, we lost in the uh, finals. Craig Muni's team. Muni. As if he couldn't let me win one. He only has three Stanley Cups, you know? I believe Muni plays with their brother on uh, well, Bar League now, doesn't he? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't talk hockey with my brother anymore. RIT in a slot. Brenner, his shot was blocked. Five on three continues now for RIT. Behind the net, back to Brenner. Brenner back to Fabin at the point. Quick pass, Saracino. Umbrella set up, out of noise. Back to Saracino. Shot, save. Kept Bianco, shot again. Lose, they score! With one second to go in the power play, the five on three, it's laced into the back of the net by Greg Noyes. The defenseman came down off the half wall and buried it. The RIT coach is insane. If there's one second left, they want that power play back. They are they're going to say that for sure. The power play had expired. They're going to have to... When I looked up at the clock, the puck was in the net before that second had ticked off. And the referees are talking to the, the clock operators right now. But there's, once again, the goal. The shot, rebound, they slap at it off the pad. Noise. Puts it to the back of the net. That's too bad. Boy, just as Kanish said, all the momentum for a moment. They had a five on three opportunity. They lost it to a penalty. And they had a five on three chance for RIT, and they capitalized. But you've seen the momentum swing a few times in this game. It just hasn't been swinging enough in the favor of Kanish. They haven't been capitalizing on their opportunities when they get them. I believe they're pointing back to the penalty box. So Greg Noyes, the Ontario native, his third goal of the season. He's a freshman. Well, it looks like we're going to have face off at center. That's a given. After a goal, that's normally what happens. Trying to help you out. I'm wondering if we're going to have a power play here for RIT. If they do, it'd be one minute and 19 seconds, and I believe they're going to say he's going back in. Back in, and Coach Smith is none too pleased. He is animated. He's animated for a few reasons. I don't think he's ha the happiest camper with the way his team's played, and this is uh, a little icing on the cake. And they will be allowed to make a change because they are the home team. And he puts out five guys, and the entire RIT crowd is holding up four. And he's going to call off. That would have been funny off. if he was doing that to send a message. And you see that there's to say, no, it's only four. <laughs> a minute 15 to go here in the second period. Two RIT players are at the Canisius blue line was actually inside the zone to draw the defense back to open up the lanes for the power play entries. Altigan looking right back across. Connects to Kolovecchia. Through the skates of Hartley. Hartley lost it. Mitchell. Right back to the near side for Hartley. Inside a minute to go here in number two. Altigan over his stick. It's a foot race. Here comes Gibbons on Haltigan, but Haltigan back hits the line out of the zone as Bartley stick check Conacher. Connor gets that puck. He's got wide open space. Kolovecchia slide pass to Burt. Left back Kolovecchia shot off the mask of Kovienko. That's how you use your head. And that one goes into the crowd. Watch that play. The difference between these two teams is the, the, the what, what they do with the puck, their decisions with the puck. RIT's possession is. I mean, I don't have a stat sheet in front of me that says, you know, who's had you know, the puck for X amount of time. But I, if I'm a guessing man, I'm guessing that they are, they are a betting man. I'm guessing they have a lot more possession time with the puck and much better decisions with the puck than Canisius. And that's been a huge difference in this game. Well, when your team's already on its heels, that crisscross play, that Drew cross, and the great drop pass allow Kolovecchia to walk in on a Tesla to get a shot on net. And a big save. Big save by my boy. <laughs>
Pass all the way across. Favitt in the slot. Shot, save, rebound. It's loose. They whack at it. They score. Brenner slaps it out of the air, baseball style. 5 nothing RIT on the power play. Gets number two on the night for Tyler Brenner. 23rd of the year. And Colt Bianco's out to the top of the circle to see if he's going to be, if he's going to be, uh... Does the goal count? Or was it the end of the period? Well, they celebrated like it counted. Have they signaled it? Well, here's a look at it. The shot, Favitt, up in the air. Watch Brenner right here. Whack! They haven't, well, they did put on the board. It's a, it, pardon me, it's official. And Coach Dave Smith came down to the end of the bench and had a few words for the officials as he walks off. He's obviously very frustrated. There's not much you can do. As a coach, you're, you know, you're, you're putting those players on the ice and you got to have trust in their decisions. Not some, not some of the best decisions, but... Take a look at the clock at the top corner of your screen. Here's the shot. Bounces up. One second. It's a goal. Yeah. As time expired, Tyler Brenner picks up number 23 as they celebrate 5 nothing RIT. You've, holy mackerel, they have just been dominant this year. Do you wonder why they're top team in Atlantic Hockey? This is why. We'll step aside. Intermission coming up. Welcome back here at Buff State. Wayne's Wilson's Tigers. Boy, they're up 5-0. It's Wayne's World here in Buffalo as Wendy Haskell standing by with the head coach for RIT. Coach, team up 5-0 right now. You guys came up fast and firing. Talk about your team getting the puck in front of the net and shooting that puck. Well, I, I think it was important to get shots to the net, get some traffic, looking for screens, tips, and rebounds. And the goalie looks like he's giving up some rebounds, so it was important for us to be there to get the uh, jump on some of the uh, chances that we got tonight. And penalty kill has been up and down this season. Talk about the penalty kill tonight. Well, our penalty killing's been down uh, early in the year, and it's been very good uh, of late. Uh, since after Christmas, we've been really on a roll, and we did a good job last night and uh, again tonight, so we're really happy with our penalty kill. And you guys played in the Final Four last year, your first in stands in Atlantic Hockey this season. Talk about that. Uh, what, what a great experience it was for our players, our, our school, our community, uh, something we'll never forget. And, and now gives us hope that we can maybe do it again. So, uh, you know, we've still got a lot of hockey this year, but we're happy with where we're sitting and uh, hopefully that we can get there again. Well, good luck with the rest of the game and good luck with the season. Thank you very much. Back upstairs, guys. Thanks, Wendy. 5 nothing. the winner of the Atlantic Hockey Conference Tournament that's held in Rochester, the same city as RIT, gets an automatic bid into the NCAA Frozen Four Tournament. With that, we'll take a break. More of the second intermission coming up after this on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Here at Buff State, they say lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, it's struck in five times here with RIT as they brought the thunder. There it is. That's what we were looking for. Steve, the cheese ball, Warzala. Cheese indeed. Love cheese. Be your favorite kind of cheese, quick. Ooh, cheddar, Swiss. Swiss? Uh, Havarti, Provolo. I like them all. Yeah, blue cheese. Gruyere is one of my favorites. Look at that little guy. Best blue cheese you'll ever find. Dinosaur Barbecue, Rochester, New York. That's a good place. Ironically enough, we're watching RIT, but that's my cheese for the day. But I will say this. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Uh, I'm not going to say it. OK, you won't. Might, might be considered. Uh, There's Dave Smith. I'm not going to go that, that route right now. There's two Dave Smith. There's head coach Dave Smith here at Canisius, and there's volunteer assistant coach Dave Smith, who is also the director of fitness and medical for the NHL. He also runs uh, all the referees. He does, you know, how they have scouts, the ref watch referees. He watches a lot of the referees, and he's, uh, I get a chance to coach with him here at Amherst, New York, or this team. 
And well, I think uh, the other Smith will have some choice words about these referees. <laughs> There's no question about it. I think he's I think actually, he has his own I bet, I'm not going to deny, I bet he actually has a page out of the rule book explaining, what do you think about this? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I wouldn't be surprised if he was saying, if you ever want to see a game in the NHL, <laughs> you will do me a favor and give me three five-on-threes this period. Coach Dave Smith, a public relations major from the Ohio State University. The key word there is the Ohio State. The Ohio State University back in 92. The referees today, by the way, Ryan Sweeney and Chris Baker. Our linesmen are Joe Baudo and Adam Bell. As the refs, the Griffs get ready to take the ice once again. Boy, they're having a good discussion. B.J. Adams, who you see talking with the other Dave Smith on the bench, talking defense. B.J., who gets hit from Bowling Green, is the defensive coach here for the Canisius Golden Griffins. Great Sunday afternoon hockey here in Western New York as RIT comes into town to take on the Canisius Golden Griffins. I would love to hear this conversation between <laughs> <laughs> well, This is where you wish it was mic'd up, right? As long as you had the dump button ready. Or that bleep button. I don't button. think he's swearing. I think he's trying to butter him up a little bit and maybe, maybe buy a power play or something. I'm sure, I'm sure initially there was uh, a little bit of sass and now he's settled in and just Listen, I'm just trying to get my point across. Trying to get my point across, you know. It's a long point. It's a very long point. I hope that's not one breath. <laughs> Getting so, some good air time. <laughs> All day. You want to try and... Uh... Here's what he's saying. I can't give you three five on threes because that's just not fair. Come on, please. <laughs> Come on. This is the I Spanish just, soap just opera game? One. Is that just what you're doing right one. now? The Spanish soap opera game? Shots on goal, we talked about them. Between two periods, RIT has 32 shots on goal. Canisius with 15. So we talked about the offense. And boy, oh boy, is offense coming from RIT. 32 shots, five goals. And by the way, we have right, a they goaltender came, they came change. To an agreement. They came to an agreement. Goaltender change for Canisius. Dan Morrison is now between the pipes for the Golden Griffins. And his new blue pads. There you see Danny Moe, the junior from London, Ontario. He's 5'10 and a half. Right there on the sheet. 5'10 and a half. That 200 half, pounds. That half inch means a lot. <laughs> his record this season of a 2010-2011 campaign is 6-12 and 4. He's got a 3-5-6 goals against and a 90.2 save percentage. As the pucks walked right back in for RIT, the shot whistled wide over the top of the net. That one gets blocked. Scarcella on line. Favitt shot it. Scarcella knocked it free. Lynch up through center. Broken right back in. Conacher. Drop for Scarcella. Looking inside for shoot the shot. And that one's knocked away. Coach Dave Smith has worked, changed the lines up a little bit this year, but he went back to the all-present goal scoring line from last year. Conacher shoots Scarcella was the big one last year for this Canisius team. And it proved to be on the score sheet as well. Brenner looking for number three. The shot and a goal deflected. It came right back to Morris and kicked the pad out. Here's Law. Left wing side winds up. Rips one off the stick of Saraceno, and it goes out of play. We've seen it enough times, though, where you can have teams come back from a 5-0 lead in the third period. It's probably not the most likely situation on any given night, but I will say that you hope that in a situation like this, when a goalie comes in in the third period, that you'll, you'll play for him. You know, you would like to have seen a, a, I don't want to say a better effort, but a better effort, if you will, <laughs> for uh, for my boy Annette there at the start, and because he he gave everything he had, and, and uh, this score is not a reflection of how he played. No, nope. Hartley shot, Morrison steered aside, but they score anyway. Well, at least one of their players did, as he put himself into the back of the net. It was Adam Mitchell. You know, it's funny, last night, Canisius had Dan Morrison start period one and two, and Coke Bianco came in in relief, and now periods one and two where Coke Bianco's here, and Morrison has come in in relief. Uh, I don't have anything to say to that. That's uh, it's unfortunate. You'd like to be able to ride your goalie out through uh, both games, and hope, wish that the score was a little closer. Donowski and Hartley. One back by the Warren, Michigan native. In his senior year at Canisius. Now here comes Donowski through center. To the outside, shoots one on. Matalora again steers it aside. 
Canisius, Mosier, out of the corner, shoots one, Matalore, the rebound right in front, he stabs at it, and gets it out of his crease. Danowski looks right back in front, blind pass intercepted, and Mitchell takes it. Mitchell almost got submarine by Chris Forsman. Jenks into the corner. He pops out with the puck. Worked on by Hartley. Mosier off the boards, out to center. Foot race for it. Eric Rex gets there first to the front of the net. He tried to get a shot off with stick check. As you know, he slammed along the boards there by Dicato. That started by uh, big, strong, uh, uh, big, medium size, but tough Mosier there on the wall, getting the puck out and sending his player down for a, would you say, a semi breakaway maybe? They got the D beat, just couldn't get a clean shot on. Just a good solid play. That's a great defensive play to get the puck out of his own zone. He's had a really solid game tonight. Mosier is one of those kids you talk, talk about it. Medium sized, and maybe when the script is off, but he plays like he's, you know, six foot eight. He does. He's fearless. He's got he's got a heart of a lion, as they say. I believe that's the other half of the Golden Griffin. I think it's the eagle and a lion combined. So I'm happy to help you out. I did not know him. That man, I just waved that, but... Well, you're a celebrity. You no, he was, he was calling me. He, he was calling my name. He probably knows my wife's family or something. Yeah, nobody knows who you are other than that. Out of the corner. Canisius backhand shot just wide. Dan Ford had a chance at it. Got the backhand, but just missed. Smith waits. Has to navigate the broken stick on the ice. In front, Conacher shot, back to the point. Here's Ralph, drills one, looking top corner, but that one missed. Conacher's pass in front went all the way back to Ralph. Had someone set up in front, I believe it was Scarcella, couldn't handle it. That one's gunned out by RIT. And forced to hop back onto the bench to negate making sure there wasn't too many men. That's the last thing you want right now is another penalty when it's already 5-0. RIT has been relentless here on the power play. Three of their goals in this game have come on the power play. Atkins Wilder. Behind the net, taking their time. Holt again. Steps up, dumps it in. Morrison tried to get a piece of it. Morrison, one of the better puck handling goaltenders in Atlantic Hockey and probably in the league. He certainly breaks up things when a chance. No shot, far down! Goal! Oh, that was in. That is a goal scorer's goal. Holy mackerel, Scott Knowles ripped that one off the bar and in. I'm not the producer of this show, but I think we might have to take another look at that one. That and was here's short Knowles. side shelf. Woo! You might get a better angle here. Knowles waits. Morrison drops the shoulder, and as he does, Knowles puts it right by him. And I think Conacher and Coach Dave Smith are saying, hey, hold on a second there, pal. I'm not sure that was it. I think speak with B.J. Adams saying, I don't think that was in either. And he's saying, ask the Golden is what he's saying to the referees right now. And I think we're going to get a penalty box for the Canisius bench. Yep. Ryan Sweeney's going to go have a few more words, saying you've got two minutes coming if you don't keep it down. Was it in? Does he have a, does he have a legitimate argument? He, all he's going to do, the referees can ask the goal judge for his opinion at any time. To me, I thought it looked in. Uh, on, I, the first, on the first shot, I know you said barring down, but we know you don't know much about hockey, so I just thought I would chip in with saying I think it was in. And when you say barring down, I think you meant middle bar inside the net, didn't you? The barn. Bar, 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 the bar. Knowles scored the last goal. That was a rocket for the top corner. Fourth of the season here as it's offside against RIT. With that offside, the 6 0 score, RIT leads. We'll take a break. surprise.
recognize the new Ford owners, they tell you what they really think. Mike, what do you like about this kid? I use the sink all the time. It's like you're talking to your car, and the car's talking back to you. Yeah. You like the outdoors? I do. The Escape has everything you need. And everything I want. I'm definitely pleased with the gas mileage. You're a fine driver. You're a great passenger. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Spread the word, because now you can get an Escape with 0% financing for 60 months. That's no interest for 60 months. Wallace, you've named your Escape Swenson. Just now, yes. Oh, okay. Knowles will take a look at it again to see if it is in fact a goal. Knowles hits the bottom part of the crossbar. Great slow motion action. Going, going. Off the crossbar there. Down it goes. See, oh, I, that I looks like it hits the blue paint. Did it hit the crossbar? Did it hit the, the, the bar connecting at the top inside? Do you understand my question? I do, I do. And I, 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 it's tough to tell there, but it looked as if it hit the crossbar. That was a great angle. A great look at it from our truck. They slowed it down. And our producers, you hear them. One more look at it here. There's where it hits the crossbar. Watch just over the right pad of Morrison. Right there. Looks like it didn't go in. As Mandalore gloves it down from Sullivan. My initial thought was that it went in. My initial thought, or my thought now, is I'm going to say it went in because I want to be right. <laughs> I'm not right too often, so I'd like to be right on that one. But I actually do think that the coach has a legitimate argument. Now, wow. now looking at that in slow motion. Changed, it definitely changed my, but that just goes to show how hard the shot was. Oh. Even in slow motion, we, we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't really see it. That was Conacher. Laces one. Dakato, even jarring with Conacher all night, back and forth in a fencing match. Conacher give him races by Dakato. Thought it was going to give him a little shot there. High over the head of Conacher, gloved down by Dakato. He'll send it in. Just across the red line. Morrison will still and play it. Morrison launches that off along the top of the glass, rims around, settles down for shoot. Off the leg of Conacher. Conacher has to go back with it. Danford up the boards for Conacher. Conacher. Dangles in his own zone. His pass intercepted by Favitt up the middle. Favitt through traffic, broken up. Scarcella over to Conacher, down the wing. Conacher shot. A piece of it was taken by Decado, taking off the, the steam on that one. Shoop in the corner. Pressed along the boards by Spivak. Spivak kind of holding on to him. Back to the point. Here's Jenks. Shoots one. Got a piece, but not all to the net. Shoop taken out. No penalty. And now here's Favitt one-on-one -on -one with Jenks. Jenks slowing him down. Waiting the shot. Morrison a save. Cover up. 6-0 game, and I, I haven't seen either one of these teams slow down yet. That's, uh, that says a lot about both teams' character. I mean, one team could take it easy, and the other team, both teams could take it easy if they wanted. I, this one's going to be tough to come back, but both of them playing as hard as they can right to the final buzzer, 11. Great Canadian band, if, if I might say that. What was it? Down to the wire? No, Rush. Oh. Rush was playing. Penalty coming up here to RIT, and Gibbons, none too happy with that call. Roughing. I think it's just frustration in general. Just trying to send a message for next time if they play again. Pardon me, Canisius penalty. They fooled everybody, including the penalty box operator. I thought. For sure, that was going to be against RIT. Well, that's why Gibbons got a that's little a, on the head. But RIT a, thought the penalty box operator opened the door as well. I thought it was a retaliatory one. They both going to go, maybe, but Gibbons sits down a power play yet again for RIT. Off the glass and down the ice, Canisius clears West Love. RIT taking their time halt again. Near side. Polovecchia into the zone. And Cameron Burt jumping, but it was offside. Pretty quiet in here right now. Very quiet. Even from the RIT fans.
Polovecchia whacked at by Love. Stays right in his way. Donowski poke checks at it. Missed. Hartley nearly fell over, and that happens. Donowski's in on goal all alone. Hartley down the wing, past Love. Love reaches back to pull the puck off his stick. Then they start battling. It comes out. Back to the point for Burt. Looking across. Halt again. Gets the pass, 1-T, couldn't get it off. Burt, back to Haltigan, looking back for Burt at the top of the circle, down low. Polovecchia in front to Mitchell, swings and misses. Strike two. Burt, looking far side, Hartley. They switch with Burt, Burt with space, looking across, off the helmet of Haltigan. Polovecchio to Burt. Right back, Polovecchia in the corner. Haltigan at the top. Right wing side. Burt, corner, centering pass, far side, Hartley, strike three, you're out. Three chances they've missed. Not really sure uh, Nacious is really that upset about the fanning on those three shots. A one-timer from Burt, a one-timer from Halt again, and then the back side from Hartley. Hartley gets a piece of that, better piece of that puck. That's uh, a good chance that that's going in. Absolutely, that's a goal. Eric Rex couldn't get it free. Favitt holds it in as he switches with Noyes. Back down low. Favitt and Jones looking. Favitt looking for the pass. Noyes had nowhere to go because they were keying in on him. Favitt cuts down the lane. Noyes looks across. Comes right back for Lynch. Lynch waits, shoots, knocked down. Canisius back to full strength. Off the boards, out to center. Good penalty kill by the Griffs. Lynch racing in. Can he beat the D? No. Scott Jenks comes over and takes the puck away from him. Lindsay waits for it. Got stick checked. Here's Favitt in the slot. Over to Lynch. The shot knocked down on the way to the net. Canisius is Dan Ford. Lynch again. Backhander from Brenner, who's looking for number three in the hat trick. Puck played along the boards, finally chip free. Lindsay corrals it, gets to the line, and dumps it in. Canisius making some changes. Well, tough game if you're Canisius here. We talked about RIT, Andrew, not coming off a win after a shutout. And obviously, this will be the first one of the season they've had. Yeah, and not a, not only just, just barely winning it, they're, uh, they took control. But I must say, Canisius, you know, the score is 6-0, but they're still competing they're still going as hard as they can they're going neck and neck with them in the in the, phys in the physicality department I think uh, I think they have a lot of upside and a lot of potential to this this hockey team well it'd be tough to find out uh, well, it would be tough to find out but we'll, in fact we'll get back to that point in a minute but... icing is the call check that icing is the call so we cannot take a break but uh, it'd be interesting to find out, Andrew, when was the last time a team like Canisius that has, you know, a top scorer in the league like Corey Conacher and Vinny Scarcello was a setup guy. I almost ate my words there for a minute as Scott Mosier took it to the net. was the last time they, through a weekend, hadn't scored a goal. Interesting to see that one. That would, uh, and like to see the record when they do or don't score get points, you know what I mean? Knowles into the zone. And Canisius comes right back. There's only four games left in the season for the Griffs after this. They take on the Purple Eagles here at home at 7.05. And then Saturday night, which you can see right here on Time Warner Cable Sports, that they take on Niagara up at Dwyer. And, and I believe go... that will be you and I again. We'll take a break. 6 nothing our score. RIT leads. I was working in the automotive industry back in Detroit and I was laid off from my position. I had to make a positive change. I chose ITT Technical Institute. Two years ago when I was laid off, you know, there's a lot of fear. What am I gonna do to provide for my family? I don't worry about that anymore. I don't. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future.
To find out more, call 1-800-551-9601. Six nothing our score here is RIT leads Canisius and boy oh boy it's been a, a firestorm here on net in the Canisius end. Matt Alora has seen a lot of rubber too but you know his defense has done a great job here today and he's done a well, great job keeping the puck out of the net. Yeah he absolutely has. He made some big saves. Obviously not as many as uh, the goalies for Canisius have had to face in terms of shots but uh, he's been he's definitely been on top of this game. Sullivan works it over the shot. Big rebound out. And heading right to the net was Donowski, but just couldn't get the puck in time. And we talked about the scoring for Canisius and how Corey Conacher is now the all-time new leading point setter here at Canisius. He took over the record from Western New York native Josh Heidinger, who wore number 12 last year, who went on to play a little junior high, pardon me, not junior, but a little professional ranks afterwards, and then decided to hang him up. He won a championship in Cincinnati, and since then, I said, okay, you know, had enough. Much like you, I think, right? One and out. Cincinnati in the East Coast League. Correct. Yeah, I played for Chuck Weber this year. Their coach. He's the head coach of the Rochester Americans. Huh? And uh, not having nearly the uh, success he had last year with Cincinnati, but a good coach nonetheless. Conacher chipped that one by the front of the net. No, no, I mean, obviously... A team like Cincinnati. In fact, they got Carl Hudson now, actually. Carl Hudson, the former Griff, who went on to Florida. And yeah, I was at camp with him in Florida. You were? Yep. He's got a he's got a cannon of a shot. He does. He does. Did you ever he's get in the way of his shot? Pretty uh no, I, I don't like the block shots, but he's also he's also a pretty physical guy too. Absolutely. He's not afraid to uh, drop the gloves or finish checks and block shots. Nope, not at all. He's a great power play. He's, he's fast, too. Here's a chance in front. They jam at it. Matt Allure will pin the puck to the ice. Oh, a little extras there from Cameron Burt. Just another save by the goaltender. Keeping his uh, goals against this game to zero. Well, Hudson actually, unfortunately for him, he had a shoulder issue, which is what kept him off the Panthers. He was cleared by two doctors, apparently, but then, unfortunately, their doctor said, nope, not allowed. Yeah, I remember seeing him in the trainer's room, and he was pretty bummed out about that. He said, uh, as I remember seeing on the roster before I went to camp, he always, he always checked through the roster and see who, who who's who, and, and uh, when I saw him and I was talking to him, he was pretty bummed out about uh, the fact that he wasn't able to participate in his first uh, NHL training camp. He played quite a bit with Rochester at the end of the season last year. He did. Were you down there then? I wasn't. No, no. I uh, I was in New Jersey, but um, you know I, I was talked to him a little bit about that. And we had uh, we had some good talks about what he used to do in Buffalo and where we would spend where he would spend his time. And we had obviously been to some of the same places. <laughs> I doubt that. You'd... Probably Chuck E. Cheese, right? Toys R Us. Yep. Chuck E. Cheese. T.J. Maxx. Macy's. Chefs. <laughs> Chefs, well. Elmo's probably. Some street called Chippewa Street. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's poke checked away. Morrison comes out, but he can't clear. It's loose. Smith dives to drive it in, but Forsman stays it out of the net. Boy. Forsman almost lost an edge there. Smith gets knocked down from behind from McKellar. And a penalty is coming up again to Canisius. Well, the last three times in the last three weeks in the NHL, we've seen goalies come out of their crease that far, but it wasn't to grab a puck. It no. was to be in a fight. But Tim Thomas took on Carey Price. Carey Price. You Johnson. Brent Johnson on. took down Di Pietro. Yeah, and then Johnson fought Haley again the other night. Fought again. Johnson's the new heavyweight for the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> I turned after the first period was 4 0, and I said, you know, I'm going to watch another game. This one's getting out of hand. I should have kept it on for the second and third because that would have been a good one to watch. Good spirited battle there by a couple of heavyweights with Goddard and Gillies. I saw that fight. I just didn't get a chance to watch the game. Got the NHL package, and I'm loving it. Love, speaking of, of such, send it in. RIT. They also just have a few games left. Uh, they will take on Robert Morris at Robert Morris on the 19th. Then they play Niagara back-to-back -back in a home-and-home -home series. That shot just missed. The net 
They take on Niagara at home. Then an RIT back at Frank Ritter. And they take on Dwyer, the 26, with a... I know you and I will be on that broadcast once again. Well, I look forward to that. Me well, too. I look forward to the game, but not working with you. Well. I love working with you. I was just told to say that, by the way. I was told to tell you that I don't like working with you. You don't? I was told to say that. Oh. I can't think for myself. People have to tell me what to say. Across the ice, Favitt gets it in. Noise over. Shot. Save. Morrison. And the scrum outbreaks Canisius. Scarcella with Law. Law shoots. Save made. Matalora. Let it look behind him, but it was still in front of him. And Law and Favitt are nose to nose. Cage the fishbowl, as they would say. Not sure. I think, uh, I think everybody should wear a half visor, to be honest with you. It would certainly change the way players come face to face. No question. I think if you look through and we do our uh, opens and our come back through after a break, one of the Canisius players shows he kind of like brings his face forward and hits their player in the cage. That would not happen. No, that would not happen. I was forced to wear a visor this year in the American League, and it's uh, it's tough. It's a tough transition, especially when you when you go your whole career without wearing one. The only last time I wore one was when I when I played in Sweden, but that didn't really count. How long were you there? I was there for three months during the lockout. Okay. And no, I did not dominate. But that's where I I honed my skills. <laughs> yeah. Whole different uh, world over there, isn't it? As uh, far as skills go. The hockey, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at, the hockey over there, the talent level is incredible. And they are just so finessed with their their, their hands and their sticks. It's just unbelievable. And, they, and their footwork, too, is outstanding. They do things a lot, they, not a lot differently, but they have some different different approaches to things. And um, it's, uh, I, think it's an, I think it's an innovative way of, of training, the way, they, uh, the way they do things. I got a chance to play a year in Switzerland. That was... Just the, just the difference you see the way the American style is and the Canadian style versus the European style. Well, it, a lot of it starts with the size of the ice. I mean, exactly. that, that was obviously, one. you know, for me, that was probably the, the best thing to happen was to allow me to flow through the neutral zone with so much speed and agility and puck handling. That, uh, But that's the biggest difference is the size of the ice and the size of the players. And they tend to go with a smaller, faster game which the NHL is changing to, but just by taking away the neutral zone. Yep. I think that's one of the best things they added in was obviously when they, they brought out the neutral zone, opened up things, and it certainly had a lot more breakaways. So now, and then the shootout they added in, which a lot of people don't like. I'm not sure, you know, the choice on that one. Here's a chance, just missing over the top of the net. Bower can't believe it. He wasn't, there was no penalty called either. And now three on two. Here's Janda. Spins away, backhand in open space, the shot just missed by Smith. Dicato out of the zone. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Jenks back down low for Kanisha. What's your opinion on the shootout here, Andrew? Uh, I like it. I think it's entertaining. Um, I don't think, I, I, I don't like the way the season ended for the Rangers in uh, Philly last year in the shootout. Obviously, it worked out well for Philly sure. going to the cup final. But um, uh, maybe if uh, I'm not saying that we would have beat the Rangers. I don't even think we would have played the Rangers. We ended up playing Philly in the first round. And, it, uh, and they, they, the took it, they took it to us. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I do. I am a fan of it. I think the fans are great of it, are, are, are very uh, happy with it. Um, and uh, it's definitely, I think, brought a, an element to the game that people enjoy. I like it as well for one specific reason, because in practice, how many times you see guys, well, we'll do the shootout drill. Never mind, here's a breakaway, Lindsay, riding solo on goal. Lindsay, shot, Madalora to save again. He has been unflappable so far in this game. Speaking of shootouts, a breakaway there. The reason I like it is because you see such a different style from players making all these moves, doing all these different things. You work on it in practice sometimes as a joke before the shootout, and now they're legitimate. Right. And you see guys in practice trying things like this and, and coming up with, with ways to, to beat goaltenders and, and add a little flair to it. 
shot into the glove of Dan Morrison as Murphy takes it. He's been pounding people all day. Speaking of poundings, Aaron Forrester's here Mondays at 6.30 here on Time Warner Cable Sports. That you can catch that live. Ruben Brown and Rob Ray. We want to, by the way, remind you that this Monday at 6.30, we're going to debut a new enforcer. And I'm not sure who that is. If I haven't been told, if, I, if, if they know, I don't know. So I'm just telling you, tune in because it's going to be a good one. Find out who the new enforcer is right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Carl Hudson. Could be Carl Hudson. Absolutely could be Carl Hudson. Six nothing is our score. Here's the save again on Tory Lindsay. Lindsay broke in. The shot right into the left pad of Shane Matalora. Tory Lindsay hails from Manitoba. Look at that. Shane Matalora is the remains the only Division One goaltender that hasn't suffered a loss this season. That is an impressive stat. It's not. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not a bad stat. And he's two minutes and 55 seconds away. From a back to back? Yes. From a back. Do we dare say the word? Nope. No. I shutout. don't. Know. I don't. You can. I won't. I'm not superstitious, so I'll say whatever I want. <laughs> if goalies are. I think you know that. That's all right. That shot deflected. It's loose and then cleared down by Canisius. I'm surprised I sat beside Ryan for five years. I'm. I'm I can't believe he didn't ship me out of there. <laughs> Tell me to go sit in the bathroom stall or something, because I would talk, 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 talk. Some goalies, every goalie's different. Some guys like that. They like the, the keeping it light. I'm convinced. I, I think if you were to ask Ryan, did you ever hear Andrew talk to you before a game, and he would say, no, I just had to blo uh, block him out. Now, Marty Biron, on the other hand, <laughs> he would talk, he would to talk you. back. Hey, PD, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Marty is a, is a great individual. Maybe someday we'll be back here in Buffalo. Right now, obviously, Patrick Leem and Ryan Miller have a tandem here in Buffalo, but would have loved to see Marty come back this year to join the, to regroup with the team that he left a, a while ago. But such a great individual, does so much for the community while he's here. Yeah, he does. He's a, he's a good, he's a really good person. He's got a great family, and his, his wife's an amazing girl. And, yes. And, uh, you know, he was, he was a great teammate. Left-handed golfer as well. Same here. Are you? Oh, yeah. I probably couldn't outdrive you. I got a chance when... Well, I only hit my five iron off the tee, so probably not. <laughs> well, a couple years ago, I got a chance to play golf with Marty Baron, and he was, had the brand new driver, the new Taylor, and I was using an old one. He said, why don't you try this one off the 18th? And I outdrove him on the 18th, and he said, good thing I won't let you use it now, <laughs> not during the whole round. But a very great guy. How long did that round of golf take? Well, uh, I don't remember, but there was enough talking to last a year. That's what I mean. I... Down yeah, the putting green. <laughs> For those of you who can't hear, well, we're not going to get into that, but we were just, we were told to be quiet because <laughs> he's making fun of us in our ear. Yeah. <laughs> Scarcella in the near corner. Back to the point, Forsman. Over for Danford. Sides to go far side. Off the skate. Dicado clears. Certainly an entertaining round of golf. There's so there'd been a camera following us that day. We could have made a reality show out of that. Yeah, probably uh, pro that that probably would have got more viewing than the Osborne's. <laughs> it's an interesting show. The newest, I think, the newest reality show that everyone's crazed about is what the Jersey Shore. Can't stand it. Weren't, you, weren't, you, on that? weren't you on that no. for a while while you were up in Jersey? No. Didn't you get the fist pumping out and wearing your graphic tees? No. Tank, no? tank tops and chains. Yep. Come on, you had to you had to do something out there. Weren't you fist pumping the whole time? If I let all my secrets out now, <laughs> we won't have anything to talk about next time. <laughs> to be continued with Andrew Peters. 50 seconds remaining here in regulation time. All the way around the net, looking back to the point halt again. And RIT is telling uh, the Kanishas players to they're shaking their keys around. You know what that means. Long. Left wing. Set in. 24 seconds remain as Matalora plays the puck behind the net. I don't know what that means. Start the buses. Oh. Forsman. 
Must be a booster club thing. Could be. Right. That's that's kind of the ironic part about it. That shot was blocked four seconds ago. Two seconds. The RIT fans got it down. Back to back shot for RIT versus Canisius. And their first time this season, they'll pick up a win after a shutout. And nothing but smiles on Wayne Wilson's face. And I'm sure for Dave Smith, a valiant effort put out for his team. We talked about it, Andrew. Goal post, goal post, goal post. How that changes its game if that's a few inches left or right. Absolutely. Goal post. You say goal post, goal post, goal post. Crossbar. They had a five on three opportunity. Yep. They gave up a five on three opportunity. I don't think the score really tells how this game was really played out. I think it was a lot closer than uh, than the scoreboard shows. Both goaltenders, all, well, all three goaltenders, I thought played really well. And I thought uh, both teams were extremely physical throughout the whole game. No question about it. Both teams were extremely physical. You saw the punishing hits. They can't fight the college hockey, but if you want to see some great hits, come to a game. We'll take a break. 6-0 is our final. Our post-game show coming up in a moment right here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Here, Time Warner Cable Sportsnet on demand portion of our post game show. Steve Warzela, Andrew Peters back upstairs as RIT took down the Golden Griffins of Canisius in back to back shutouts Friday and Sunday. MS6 of the final here today from Buffalo. Welcome back upstairs. And uh, Andrew, if you're Canisius, you know you battled hard, you battled to the end. Unfortunately, over the weekend, a tough one because the playoffs are right around the corner. And this is the final home stretch for this team. Well, you talked about the score of the game, 6 nothing, and, and, you know, obviously being up here and seeing the game from a different angle, I, I have to say that I was really impressed with Canisius um, for the fact that I, I, they never stopped competing, and I think that uh, that says a lot about the character of the team that they have, and, and I, I think that goes all the way up to the coaching, and, uh, you know, I, I, this game uh, could have been... 6-5 could have been could, could have even worked into Canisius favor had um, had they not hit the three posts and and uh, you know if they maybe popped one in there on the power play with the five on three but uh, you know what they just have to back to the drawing board and, and regroup for a couple big games next weekend and and um, that's uh, that's pretty much it you know RIT is a good hockey team second time out awesome job yet again you're a liar, and uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I enjoy being here with you, and uh, look forward to the next time. It'll, it'll be a next time for sure. That'll do it for all of us here. For my partner, Andrew Peters and Wendy Haskell, I'm Steve Warzela, and all our entire crew bidding you adieu, and happy Valentine's Day to you tomorrow here in West New York. We say goodnight from Buffalo.